Praise the Lord. I, I want to encourage you. And didn't, didn't plan on saying this this morning. Just felt impressed in my spirit just before I come up here to encourage the church to hang on. Because the next thing you know, we might be living in the glory world. It could be on a day just like today, another normal Sunday morning service. And all of a sudden, everything changes. I want to encourage you. Now's not the time. Look at me, everybody. Now's not the time to give up. Now's not the time to give in. Now's not the time to back up. But now's the time to dig in. Now's the time to move up. Now's the time that we realize how... The Bible said, now is your salvation nearer than when you believe. So it's closer today than it was yesterday, and if the Lord tarries until tomorrow, it'll be closer tomorrow than it was today. So I just, I just felt impressed in my spirit to tell you to hang on. Just over the next hill, we may be home. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day when, uh, when things ain't like they are now. Can I get a witness in the house? I got a, I got a short little message this morning. I hadn't got a whole lot of notes, uh, comparatively speaking, when I get up to preach, so I may not hold you 10 or 15 minutes here this morning, and all the church said, praise the Lord. But uh, I, I just got a short little word to hear this morning. But I believe it's important that every one of us keep our eyes on the prize. Don't let situations, don't let circumstances, don't let anything cloud your vision or cause you to take your eyesight off what is important. Because as sure as I stand here, Jesus is coming one of these days. And you and I need to be ready. We need to make sure that we stay ready. Don't allow yourself to get off course and move away from what you know is right. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 15, if you want to follow along on overhead or in your scripture, your device, whatever you've got, uh, let me say before I preach, it's good to have some uh, kin folks in the house with us this morning on the Smith side and on the Noel side. My great nephew's here, Beverly's nephew's here. Uh, we're just glad to have all of you, all y'all Smith and Noles, as you know who you are and we're glad to have you, but uh, I'm glad to have everybody in the house with us. If you're a visitor here, we're thankful you're here. Home folks, give our visitors a hand clap of appreciation for being here. The Bible said in Proverbs <clears throat> chapter number 15, verse 19, uh, the Bible said, the way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns, but the way of the upright is a highway. Proverbs 16 and 17 said, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Another version reads, The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. The slothful man or the lazy person can always find an excuse or a reason not to keep going. How many of you know it's easy to let things get in your way? It's easy to find something, if you're looking for something to hinder, you can find something to hinder or to give you the excuse you need not to do what you know is the right thing to do. It's easy to find that. The lazy person can always find an excuse or a reason not to keep going. But we cannot allow the least little obstacle to stop us. Just because things don't go our way doesn't give us an avenue to quit. Some might say that the briar patch is too thick and it causes me too much trouble, too much aggravation. There's got to be an easier way. But I want to remind everybody in the house today, there's only one way we're going to get to heaven. There's only one way we're going to achieve what we're looking for, and that's through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I, I, just, I just want to say for good measure, that there, there's really no gray area. You understand what I'm saying, P? There's no gray area. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Now, you ain't got to shout me down when I say that. But either you're saved or you're not saved. How many of you know you're saved? Well, I'll, I'll preach anyway. How many, of you know, how many of you know there's a right way and there's a wrong way? There's a right way or there's a way that's not the right way. 
And people in the church house and outside the church house need to make sure that we're doing this the right way. Don't let every little thing. The devil will cloud your screen with everything in the world to distract you and get you off course and cause you to say, I'm just going to give up. I'm tired of putting forth the effort. You ain't going to make it but one way. The Bible said if we follow him, we are his children. Or if we obey him. We're his children. How many of you obey in the word? How many of you know you're on the right way? Say amen. My, my title, I have trouble getting titles for these messages. They put them on YouTube and stuff, and they want me to title them. I come up with this title today. It's, it's really uh, amazing, really. But my title today is Get On Down the Highway. Come on, Ricky. I get behind some folks on the interstate. <laughs> get on down the highway. Get over to the left lane, go 40 mile an hour, and make me mad as a mice cat. But we as Christians, we need to understand, Ben, we need to get on down the highway. The devil's got all kind of distractions. He wants you to notice everything but t- staying on the right way. And staying on the highway you need to be on. The slothful man, the lazy person, always find an excuse. If you hunt an excuse, go ahead and sit down. You're going to find it anyway. Some might say the briar patch is too thick, caused me too much aggravation. I'm just not going to try anymore. But I want to remind you of the verses that say in Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I've traveled the highway to hell before, y'all, and it's not at all what it's been portrayed to be. Can I get a witness from all you hellions that used to be in that way and used to be traveling that direction how many of you know it ain't what the devil portrays it to be he'll portray the highway to hell as an enjoyable way or something you can have fun at but sooner or later sin will cost you more than you want to pay I'm going to say amen I for one have gotten older brother Ricky and I've decided there's a better choice there's a better way It can seem right, it can look right, and maybe even feel right, but it's the end. Listen, it's the end that's the problem. When you get to the end of the highway, that's when if you're doing your own thing, the end of the road is when the problem starts. It's like my daddy told my son one time, they was on top of a building sweeping leaves off. He told Chris, he said, now don't fall, son. He said, the fall won't kill you, but that sudden stop at the end, it'll give you trouble. How many of you know people just going down the highway wide open, ain't paying a bit of attention as to what's going on, don't realize that eternity is out in front of them, but one of these days the highway's going to run out. What are you going to do when the highway runs out? What are you going to do when it's true? Everything's been preached to you all these years. All them old-timey gospel preachers telling you hell's hot, heaven's real, you better get ready, and you've been going down the road like ain't nothing going on, and all of a sudden you're going to come to the place. The highway runs out. What you going to do then when it's all over with, when it's all said and done, what you going to do when the highway runs out? It can seem right look right, maybe even feel right, but it's the end. I looked up that word end in the concordance. It means the last. End. But this is what got me, Brother Ricky, when I looked up that word end. It's the future also in the Greek. The future. Posterity. In other words, the end is last, but the last is also the future. And your final stop will to a certain extent dictate, affect, or even redirect your posterity. In other words, what comes after the end. How many of you know you get to the end of the road, if I ain't another direction to go, you're there. And one of these days after a while, Brother Rodney, the Lord's going to come, or we're going to go to the grave, and then we'll be at the end of the road, and once you're there, then it's the future in front of you. What you going to do when you run out of highway? What are you going to do when it's all said and done, and it actually takes place like we've been trying to tell everybody for all these years? I, for one, am not going to get to the throne, Brother Joey. I'm not going to get there and say, you didn't tell him. I'm telling you today. I'm not going to have that hanging over my head. I'm telling you today, the road's going to run out one day after a while. I said, the end's coming. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The end's coming. One of these days, it's going to be over. What are you going to do then? Are you ready? Turn around and get somebody by the hand and say, I'm ready. Are you ready? Shake their hand real good. Wake them up. I'm ready. Tell them you're ready. Did 
you know something I am? The scripture is saying exactly what it sounds like it's saying. It says exactly what it sounds like it's saying. If any of us take the wrong road, we're in trouble. If any of us take the wrong road, we're in trouble. There will be a missing piece. If you take the wrong road, there will be a missing piece that should have linked you to future generations, but because you took the wrong road, posterity will not end up like you want it to end up. It's like this verse in Isaiah about the posterity of Jesse. Isaiah 11 and 1 said, Therefore there shall come from forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. It's plain to see an easy chain of restaurants. Jesse's going to have kids or a son, and he'll have kids, and they'll have kids, and they'll have kids. And that rod being capitalized should give us the right direction, tell us it's Jesus they're talking about. But that branch will grow. Roots will take hold, and because of folk going the right direction or on the right road, it will ensure the desired destination. Let me back up. How many of you seen my little granddaughter dancing up here a while ago? Cutting the rusty. I want my grandkids, I want, I want Clint and Bree and Mila and Ollie and Hallie. I want to see them not only dancing to the music, I want to see them dancing in the Holy Ghost. My, my posterity if I've got anything I can leave after I'm gone I want it to be the fact Tony that my grandkids know what it is to hear from an almighty God I want them to know what it is to feel the presence of God how many of you felt the presence of God in the singing this morning to worship you can feel the presence there's something extra in the house when the Lord shows up I want, the, I want my posterity to be, I want my legacy to be, so to speak. Raised with community church and my grandkids worshiping here 50 years from now. What do you want? What road are you on? Where's the road you're on? Where's it going to take you? What's it going to lead to for your family? What you're doing now will affect your family for years to come. You hear me? What you're doing now will affect your family. It has an impact. You think it you think it don't matter. You think it ain't important, but it's important to show your kids what it's like. How important it is to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, y'all. Don't dry set me this morning. How many of you know it's important to show your kids and grandkids what it's like to go to church? Come on, say amen. It's very plain that we need to be in the right direction. In our lives here in this world, listen to me, y'all listen to me, I got a short message. But every choice, every choice you make is a road. Every choice you make is a highway. If, if, if the devil had had his way, I'd have went a lot of different roads. And every choice I've made has made me wind up right here where I'm at. And you can't see that if you don't think spiritually, if you don't think in the spirit realm. Every road I chose in my past life has made me wind up right here. And only by the grace of God am I standing where I'm at. And it's the choices that God helped me to make after I let him get involved in my choice making. Every choice, every choice you make is a highway. The way of the upright is a highway, and the right road to take is the highway that departs from evil. That's another version of those same scriptures I read to you. I preach a solemn word, an important word, and tell all of us to make sure we're on the right highway. Highway in the text translates from a word that means a public way, a main and direct road. We need to keep in mind that our forever eternity begins at the end of our temporary life. We're all going to the glory world. Or we're all going to hell. Choices matter. Come on, say amen, everybody. Choices matter. You ain't going to get to California heading south on 75. You understand what I'm saying? You got to make sure you're on the right way. Are we listening this morning? Are you listening to what I'm saying? We will not arrive halfway there. We will get to the end of one or the other road. We'll make it to one of the two, heaven or hell. No in-between. I hope that you're not halfway knowledgeable about your roots and 
what you need to do to get to your last stop. How many of you know what you got to do to make it? Come on, how many of you know you got what you got to do to make it? Raise your hand. A road that leads to life yet to come. It's that continuous tapping on your shoulder or in your soul reminding you that there's some place over yonder that we're all going. Get on down the highway. Don't be holding up traffic behind you. Don't be holding up your family. Don't make, don't make a wrong turn and cause your family to make a wrong turn. The prophets tried to walk on the highway toward home. The apostles highlighted the route and they showed us the way. One more mile on this highway could find us where we've all been headed all this time. Isaiah 35 and 8. And an highway shall be there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfarer men, though fools shall not err therein. Watch the road. I can't tell you how many times Beverly has told me, watch the road. But she's got some illustrations that go with some, some activities that go with that. She puts her hand on the dash and she puts her foot on the floor. And she goes, watch the road. Chris can testify. They used to make fun of her. I don't know why she keeps telling me that. Watch the road you're on. Watch the road you're on. Don't allow, don't allow yourself to miss the road. Stay on the road. Don't allow the dark time we live in to make you groggy and allow your attention to get sidetracked. Making it only halfway down the highway won't get you there. But I will preach to you this morning and tell you that if you'll stay on the highway, you'll make it. On our interstate system, and this is just a little research you can do yourself on the Internet, President Eisenhower established the Federal Highway Act of 1956, and because of that, there are 41,000 miles of highways or interstate system where you and I can travel from state to state, from one state to another. Spiritually speaking, you and I can travel from the state of humanity to the state of eternity if we get on the right highway and stay on it. It's simple, but it seems to be complicated to some folks when it's so easy to let a little briar patch trip you up and make you get off the road. I can't hardly preach this message this morning without referring to these scriptures in Matthew 7 where it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Turn tell your neighbors to get on down the highway. One is right, one is wrong. One seems extreme, the other appears to be more practical. One requires effort, the other seems to roll with the flow. The implication is clear. It's an illustration I thought of. You can't get to California on I-75. You ain't going to get to heaven unless you get on the right road. Stay on the highway. I asked the question this morning, getting ready to close, in what state will you find yourself if you continue down the highway you're currently on? Where are you going to wind up if you keep going the direction you're going? If there's anybody in here is questioning, you're on, you're on the edge of decision, in the valley of decision. Maybe you've been, you've been playing around with living right, playing around with going to church. Just, just, it's just something you do. Going to church is just something you do. It's not who you are. It's just somewhere you go. But how many of you on that, on that edge and, and you, you're, trying to, you're trying to keep one foot in, one foot out? It's time today to get on the right road. John the Baptist said this. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Get on down the highway. Isaiah 26 and 7 in closing. For, but for those who are righteous, listen to this. The way is not steep and rough. He says, you're a God who does what is right, and you smooth out the path ahead of them. Can I tell you, sometimes obstacles come, Jake. Okay? Sometimes hard places come when, when you've made up your mind and you've committed and you've decided, Nicole, I'm going to make it to heaven. If Tom don't go, I'm going to try to go. How many of you are going to try to go? You, 
got, you got to make up your mind. I'm going to stay on the road. I ain't getting off the highway. I'm going to make it. When you make that decision in your mind, I'm going to make it no matter what, the way gets a lot easier. <laughs> I said the way gets a lot easier when you make up your mind. Don't let, don't let the devil trick you and say the road's too rough. You can't make it because you can. I promise you, you can make it. Stand with me, everybody. I told you it was going to be short. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that if there's somebody here this morning that's on the wrong road, if, they're, if they've taken the highway that they don't need to be in, on this morning, Lord, I pray that you'd minister to their heart. Bring them to a place of decision right now, Lord, and let them decide in their own heart, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to stay on the highway. I'm going to get on down the highway and make it. Father, I pray this because it's important and it's urgent in our lives that we make the right decision to stay on the right road and not take the wrong road. I ask you, Lord, that you would guide people's steps, guide their heart, guide their mind. God, help them make the right decision. Father, we'll be careful to give you praise and give you glory for everything that you do. For it's in Jesus' name we ask, and everybody said, heads bowed, nobody looking around. Listen, folks, if you're headed down the wrong road, you know it. I ain't got to tell you if you're lost. I ain't got to tell you if you're unsure. If you're not sure about the direction you need to be going, I don't have to tell you that either. But if you want to make a correction, opportunities in the house today. If you want to make a correction in the way you're traveling and the road you're on, you can do that today. The option's available. That's right, brother. Y'all hear, Roger? You get to the end of the road, there's no turnaround. My God... Now's the time. Now's the time. Don't let, don't let anything, don't let anything. The writer, Solomon, the writer of that proverb said, just because a little briar patch, people stay, they can't stay on the road. You got to make up your mind. Don't wait till you get to the end. It's too late then. Anybody need to pray? Anybody will step out from where you are? Say, preacher, I'm going to get on the highway. I'm going to get on down the highway today. My gosh, it's so important. Father, I pray one more time. If there's somebody here and decisions in their mind, they're trying to make a decision, I pray you help them decide right now, Lord, and step out from where they are. Help them to step out from where they are. You decided you're going to get on the highway and stay on it. Now's the time. Step out from where you are. Make sure you're on the right road. If not, lift up holy hands without wrath and doubt and thank God because everybody's ready to go this morning. Come on, thank Him because everybody's ready to go.